Alright, this is just a quick tutorial on how to set up a link aggregation LACP protocol for your FreeNAS system. I had a bit of trouble with this previously, so I thought it would be a good idea just to show you how to do it on YouTube. It's a bit easier. Hope it helps. Now, I personally didn't figure this out. But this is what I got off um, the forums here, FreeNAS. So if you just type in link aggregation problems, you'll find this heading in their forums. Just type it in up here. And come down to this guy here. He's, this is his step-by-step, -step, how he got it working. I too just followed this verbatim and got it working fine. Um, so first things first, complete reformat. So take out your USB drive from your FreeNAS system and put it into your Mac PC, reformat it to FAT32 or NTFS. Just so you get wipe out the whole firmware off it, so when you reinstall onto it, um, it doesn't get any old settings and stuff. So once that's all done, oh, put that back into your FreeNAS system, reboot off a disk, and install it onto your um, onto your USB flash drive or whatever. Now once you've once you've done that, done the fresh install on your console, you want to configure link aggregation, which is serial two in the console. Once that should appear and it will tell you that the interface should appear and tell you, you know, I think one to six, like link up, which one you want to use, LACP, um, round robin, or etc. So we're just going to go through LACP. Um, so you choose LACP, whatever serial that was. I think it was about midway, three or four, can't remember. Um, select the proper configuration, say add interfaces. So whatever interfaces you want. Um, so if you have the other one that you're using, click on that and go enter and then I think it came up saying add more interfaces but there were none so you have to press Q for quit and, and enter. Once you've done that, reboot it. So that's 10 on, on my one, serial 10. Reboot and once it's rebooted, you'll get a IP address on your console. So once you've done that, type in the IP address up the front, mine's 2.16 for me. And you'll want to come over to the interface here and edit. And you make sure this is ticked if you want DHCP. I mean, you don't have to. You can always configure it and type in your own IP address and stuff. But, I mean, when you've got switches and routers and one going from the other and, you know, you're having different things setting it all up, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes to, to get it working properly without it stuffing up. Um, so once that's done... You want to go. Um, you want to go to your see down here. You want to go over to your switch. So for LACP to work, you need a compliant switch or router that does support LACP. So you can't choose this uh, link aggregation protocol if if you um, don't have a compliant switch or router. Oh, I think routers that can, some could be compliant. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just switches. So I've got a GS 108T D link. Oh, sorry, Netgear. Uh, I got it for fifty-five dollars off eBay, which is quite cheap. Um, you can get a, you can get the a Cisco one as well. It's about one hundred and thirty Australian dollars delivered or something off eBay as well. So they're not too badly priced. So these are the two that that we know of that are supported. Although I know of anyway. So once that's done, you log into your. your switch, go lag for link aggregation, members, okay. You can have four ports per per one, like, it's hard to explain. You got lag ID, you got two lags, but you can only have a maximum of four in um, aggregation. So you can have one lot of four, and then you can have a second lot of four. So for us, we're only using two ports that we want to make one. So port two and port three connect to my FreeNAS system. And so that's where we plug them into the, the switch. So you click them. You gotta do that do that first. And once you've done that, you you know you gotta apply. It takes a couple of minutes for it to reboot, just be patient. You don't it does take a while. And then obviously you've got serial one, which is here, and that's obviously your first link aggregation that you're gonna be using. So you wanna enable it, give it a name, FreeNAS, and enable LACP. Apply, and once that's done, basically that's pretty much all set up from your from your route switch side of things. The other thing what I was going to say is starting. A... 
also what you have to do is if you're going to have your FreeNAS system set up with the link aggregation through, so through two ports the other thing is that although your FreeNAS system is set up so it can, it can actually go send data through two ports the actual system needs two ports being sent to the switch as well so if you have say for example that for my, in my case I've got port 1 which goes to my router which in turn goes to my computer that's one port of data coming through so one cat5 can take around about 130 megabytes of data through one so 135 megabytes of data is coming into this switch and then two, you can basically get 260 megabytes going from the switch to the FreeNAS system but because there's only 130 megabytes coming in it can only, it can only actually send the maximum of what it can actually fit, fit on one line because that's what it's coming in as to the FreeNAS system, vice versa. If it's coming a whole heap of it, 260 megabytes is coming out of the FreeNAS system to the switch and it's meant to be going somewhere, it can only put all that data through one line, therefore it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna be a bottleneck for you. So you wanna have set up these, these two, two, it goes to number two, and have say one and four, basically, you wanna set up as well. Now, so maybe one will be going to your computer and number four would be going to your computer. So in my case, I've got iMac. So that becomes a bit of a problem because I've only got one RJ45 on the back of my uh, Ethernet port on the back of my computer. So it does become a problem for me. But um, I've got a PC as well where I can actually put two ports to the switch. Um, so that you want to set that up as well. So once you've done... Once you've finished with the other one, you have to set up this one as well and enable that and choose your, your ports that you want for um, for two, for which goes to your computer. So that, that's the other thing that you want to have to do. So you, just to give it a test to make sure it is working, you know, find a movie and drag it across into your FreeNAS system and once, give it a fairly big movie so it gives it a bit of time to do it. So then you can come back to the reporting and actually see how it has split the bandwidth over, you know, two ports. Obviously here, you know, it's not getting the best performance on, on mine right now, but that's, I believe, because I'm using this um, SKO, uh, SK0, um, which is a D-Link gigabit PCI switch that I bought off eBay. It was about seven bucks and it's not very good. It's a piece of crap. If you're going to do it, you may as well get a half-decent switch. I bought a um, an, an Intel... Pro dual port uh, gigabit switch, which is a PCI-X card, which means it's a server 64-bit, um, but it is also backwards compatible with PCI 32-bit, which which is what I'm using it in. Just um, so, uh, and I was getting around about 90 to 100 megabytes read writes, sometimes up to that on one of the ports when it, without link aggregation. So it was real, a lot better than just this by itself, this one by itself it was getting about 40 to 50 uh, megabytes per second so it was, I think this is where my limiting factor is at the moment I just haven't got the I've just got a new um, motherboard so it just doesn't fit into it right now I've just got to get a cable to so it gets into it okay and once that's set up I should be able to get over 100 megabytes providing there's no other bottlenecks um, yeah so once that's done you just monitor this and make sure it is spread out of both of them because if it's not you've done there's a problem with it and um, also when you go back to your networks like I said before you you, you want to see this sk0 dot or comma alc0 and lacp because that's what we've chosen as that's basically what it's going to be coming should come up as also make sure dhcp is ticked there as well if it already isn't. All right, so that should do it. Um, that should do it all, basically. And then you'll have to, you know, reprogram everything else how you had it. All right, that's it for me.
the other thing what I was going to say is starting. Also, what you have to do is if you're going to have your FreeNAS system set up with the link aggregation, so through two ports, the other thing is that although your FreeNAS system is set up so it can actually go send data through two ports, the actual system needs two ports being sent to the switch as well. So if you have, say for example, for my, in my case I've got port 1 which goes to my router which in turn goes to my computer. That's one port of data coming through. So one Cat5 can take around about 130 megabytes of data through one. So 135 megabytes of data is coming into this switch. And then two, you can basically get 260 megabytes going from the switch to the FreeNAS system. But because there's only 130 megabytes coming in, it can only, it can only actually send the maximum of what it can actually fit, fit on one line, because that's what it's coming in as to the FreeNAS system, vice versa. If it's coming a whole heap of it, 260 megabytes is coming out of the FreeNAS system to the switch and it's meant to be going somewhere, it can only put all that data through one line, therefore it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna be a bottleneck for you. So you wanna have set up these, these two, two, it goes to number two, and have say one and four, basically, you wanna set up as well. Now, so maybe one will be going to your computer and number four would be going to your computer. So in my case, I've got iMac. So that becomes a bit of a problem because I've only got one RJ45 on the back of my uh, Ethernet port on the back of my computer. So it does become a problem for me. But um, I've got a PC as well where I can actually put two ports to the switch. Um, so that you want to set that up as well. So once you've done... Once you've finished with the other one, you have to set up this one as well and enable that and choose your, your ports that you want for um, for two, for which goes to your computer. So that, that's the other thing that you want to have to do.